What is up folks, this is Ericast, and today I want to cover exactly how P2P tunnels work and how to set them up yourself. So P2P tunnels for me personally have been a bit of a frustration in the past. I understood the principles behind them and I understood why they were so important to use, but I wasn't clear on exactly how to set them up because, well, every time I tried to set them up, I just plain couldn't get them to work. Um, but I set up this little network here and basically just fiddled with it until I got it to work. All right, so there are a few ways that you can go about doing this, but principally you have to understand one very, very important thing. Both sides of your network need power. And that was the big hang up for me is understanding that I had to have power over here in order to access the items that were put in over there, over here. So, and I'll show you in a little bit a real world example of um, how to use PDP tunnels. Uh, but basically what P2P tunnels do is allow you to put in items over here. I can see that this is what I have stored over here over here. So you might say, well, why exactly do you want to do that? And the answer is lines. It's all about the number of channels that you have access to on each line. So over here at this point, you see that we have two uh, channels currently being used. One of them is for this ME terminal. terminal. And one of them is this ME chest. You can see the chest going in through here. It's going into the P2P tunnel, which is calibrated um, to be set up with the same frequency as this one. And you can see the one line continuing on until it hits this right here, this terminal, and then it multiplies to two. Um, the reason that this blue line right here is uh, has these two lines is because it has this uh, P2P tunnel and this P2P tunnel. Now, these, uh, this connection right here is to show you that it needs power. So quartz fiber will not transfer channels between two smart cables or just two ME cables, period. Um, it only transfers power. So that's why there's two lines right here, but there's only one over here. So we need power um, to get this to work and this line to work. So make sure and at all times have power going to another system. But remember, if you're going to do something like this, uh, obviously this is a creative energy cell. So, you know, I don't have power hooked up, especially in a big complicated way of using generators and stuff. Uh, you can only have one ME controller. Remember that. Uh, or set of ME controllers. I can have, you know, all these. But as soon as I put one over here, it will no longer work because there's a controller conflict. So just remember that you cannot do that. Um, and the reason that you might is say, oh, I wanted to power this side over here. Well, you know, obviously you're going to need a power acceptor. Let's work on something else. Um, applied energistics. Um, you're gonna have to have something like this set up. So if you wanted to pipe power into here and not have this set up over here, if say I'll break that, um, then this is acceptable. Just don't use one of those. Let me go ahead and connect a blue one. I just make it a little bit more simple there. All right, so as far as this goes, the big thing that you need to understand is that it has to go into this side right here. So we've got this solid side right here. Um, this is what it's going, the channel's going into, or out of rather, and depending on how you look at it. So the channel that you're, this box is going into, this side, it needs at some point to come out of this side over here. So it doesn't matter where, well, I mean, it does matter, but um, for the sake of this explanation, it doesn't matter where this comes out of, it just has to, at some point, um, come out before it reaches, say, the ME controllers. Now, 
the reason that it's uh, so important to do stuff like this is because, well, in some cases you've got all sorts of things down here on this end that are taking up a bunch of channels. Now even with the uh, thicker cables that hold 32 channels, uh, you can't necessarily get all of these lines um, going all the way to your ME controller. So say you have a 32 block, say you're, let's just do this just for the sake of doing it. All right, say you've got something that's way down here. You've got a bunch of different things that are down here. So say this represents all of your ore processing, which is maxing out a dense cable, which are like these. So say that this dense cable that all of this is hooked up to is, well, it's not going to connect but it's because it's different colors. Let me go ahead and get the dense white cable. All right, say all of these down here are maxed out. You've got all 32 channels maxed out down here. And you need to add more machines that are down here. Well, that is exactly the situation that I have set up at the base in my Infinity Minecraft world, so I will show you exactly how that works. Okay, so here we are in a section of my base, and as you can see, I've got seven channels hooked up here at the moment. Well, these seven channels are actually a lot more channels. I've got seven here, I have six here, five here, five here, another eight, and I've got eight here. And I'm fixing to be setting up a set of uh, block smashers over here. And there's going to be 10 of these. So these are going to have all sorts of other things hooked up to them too, which are going to be, well, a lot of channels when it's, you know, all said and done. But remember, on my dense cable, I've only got six channels. All of these guys are being combined into these P2P tunnels to only equal seven channels. So that is what makes P2P tunnels so powerful is by the time I have all of this stuff hooked up down here, well, there's only nine channels. So what that allowed me to do is to use my ME controller base here um, to export all of these P2P tunnels. So I've got, at this point, nine. So they're splitting off and exporting directly into the ME controller as if they had a specific line that went from all the way down there all the way over here. Sorry about that folks, had a bit of a freeze up there. Um, but basically, can you imagine how much space and how many materials it's going to take to run that many ME dense cables um, to get all of that running all the way down there? You're going to have multiple lines of these things. Um, so that is exactly where the power of the PDP tunnel comes in. So, how do you do it exactly? I showed you the setup but what you're also going to need is this memory card. And what the memory card does is if you go ahead and So what we would do is say I have one hooked up here. Um, and yes, you can actually do lines within lines. So you can do uh, inception kind of stuff and with it, which is kind of cool and gets really ridiculous and really confusing. Um, I'm not going to go over that, but I'm sure you guys can work it out exactly how it works. But um, so if I wanted to have something coming out of this right here, all I would do is save the settings. So that's shift right click uh, for the natural settings. Mine's actually F right click since I have sneak um, set to F. But all you do is set it to this one and then create a new one that's down here. So you would need to have a new connection in which you went ahead and connected it like that. And then, of course, connected it to the main line and said, hey, 
you know, this one right here is going to be, you just right click, you load the settings into the P2P tunnel. So it's actually not that hard to set up, but it can be a little bit confusing. Just make sure that they have power and you're pretty much all set. So uh, that's going to be it for now. I'm going to finish setting this up for my um, main series there. It goes with modded Minecraft. And yeah, we'll get all these block smashers working. So I hope that helped you out some um, because P2P tunnels are really, really awesome. Applied Energistics is an amazing mod, um, but it can be a little bit confusing at times. So uh, that is exactly how all that works. So until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful day.